My dad was always my favorite person to take road trips with. He was my partner in crime on the road, some would say. Him and my mom split when I was younger, so taking road trips together was always our thing that we liked to do together. And it would always start the same way. He would text or call me up with sometimes just a day's notice and say something along the lines of, what do you say we drive to California tonight? Or sometimes something a little more vague, like, want to hit the road? <laughs> and that was it. We would spend a few hours packing bags and getting CDs and snacks, and then we would jump in his car and be on the road together. And road trips with my dad were probably as close to a religious experience as 12-year-old me could muster at the time. It's not what I imagine a 32-hour car ride with a 12-year-old girl and her father would be like in today's world. I wasn't on playing video games or on my computer or listening to music trying to ignore him the whole time. It was always just the two of us sitting next to each other, singing, talking, laughing, or sometimes just sitting in silence and looking at whatever landscape was passing us by. And my favorite thing about my dad is that he never treated me in the ways a father was supposed to treat his daughter. He always treated me as his equal. So when we would be on these road trips together in the car for hours and hours and hours, we would be sitting next to each other as two adults. And when we would be talking, we would talk to each other like two adults would. And at 12 years old, we were having conversations about the big topics, like life and death and love and his career as a doctor. And he would ask me questions about what kind of things made me happy. And then he would ask me questions about what kind of things I was afraid of. And then we would talk about how both of these things work together in the bigger picture. And I can remember so many nights speeding along some deserted country highway, miles and miles away from anything that we knew. And he would ask me questions about what my dreams were and what I wanted for myself in the future, and then how I planned on achieving those things. And at 12 years old, nobody had ever asked me questions like this before and actually stuck around to listen to what I had to say for the answer. And I know I'm only 24 years old tonight, standing up here, so I kind of have a limited well of life experiences to draw from. But I can honestly say that those nights spent in the, night with my in, the, in the car with my dad, those were some of the best nights of my life. Unfortunately, as the years went on, my dad developed a nasty drug and alcohol addiction. So our road trips together soon turned into car rides, with my mom and I bringing him to rehab or whatever detox facility he was in after his latest relapse. But unfortunately, those car rides stopped altogether. We lost him in 2010 when I was 17 to suicide. And to be honest, all of us saw it coming, but none of us knew how to help. We loved him with, with every fiber of our being, and we tried as hard as we knew how to save him but when it finally happened, it hurt all the same. And at 17, this was my first real heartbreak. And it was earth shattering, and it was character changing. And I have not been the same person since then. But since 17, I have been a person who knows how to survive some of life's hardest moments. And for that, I am grateful forever. After all of that happened, it was time for me to go to college. So I decided I wanted to go to art school. I moved to Kansas City to attend the Kansas City Art Institute. And it was here that I realized about a whole nother type of heartbreak that existed in the world. More specifically, the type of heartbreak that comes when you have a boyfriend that cheats on you. And although I was making major strides in my own fashion career while at college, when I look back now, all I can really remember is like a really intense cycle of bad boyfriends that led to bad breakups, that led to new boyfriends that turned bad, and then led to more bad breakups. And every time this would happen, I started to do what I now call the breakup road trip. And when it would happen the same way every time, I would be upset about whatever breakup I had just gone through. So I would burn a CD full of breakup songs, and then I would go in my car and drive to the Starbucks that was just down the street from my apartment at the time. It was open 24 hours. It was so amazing. I would get a venti iced skinny vanilla latte with two extra shots of espresso. And then... <laughs> 
would jump back into the car, roll all of my windows down, and drive hours and hours and hours into the night, screaming the lyrics to whatever breakup song perfectly described what I was going through at that exact moment in time. And these breakup road trips happened every few months for what I can now say was four or five years. <laughs> So my friends and family totally started to catch on and they knew every time they saw a late night Instagram post of mine that was like a picture of a highway and some sad song lyrics as the caption, that whatever relationship I had been in had just ended. <laughs> But looking back now on these years, I can see that I was using road trips as a stand-in for a therapist. Um, but I'd be lying if I didn't say that it didn't help just a little bit. But I do wish I could go back and give teenage Nicole a hug and tell her that it wasn't always going to be this complicated and things weren't always going to hurt this bad. But that maybe, just maybe, she needed to go through all of these things and love all the wrong people and feel all of this pain because there was something better waiting for her. And that maybe in a few years she would use all of these life experiences to start a really kick-ass clothing line that would turn into kick-ass stores and a kick-ass business, but she just didn't know it yet. But the breakup road trips I was telling you about couldn't end without one final bang. And this bang came in the form of a 10-day monster breakup road trip that happened this past October. <laughs> And my mom and I drove all the way from Kansas City down to New Orleans, over to Florida, and then all the way back up to the Midwest. And it was a whole thing. I turned my phone off. I didn't talk to anybody. I didn't check my emails. I didn't even get on Instagram. I listened to like a hundred different breakup songs and rolled the windows down and cried. And it was a whole thing. But it was the monster breakup road trip because I was going through the monster of all breakups. And this was one of the hardest breakups I've ever had to go through because it wasn't only me saying goodbye to a partner that I had spent years of my life with. It was also me saying goodbye to the person I had been for the past 24 years. And this is a person who had settled to be with people who she knew weren't right for her and the person who had settled to be with people who she knew didn't treat her the ways that humans were supposed to be treated. <sighs> but when I finally got back to Kansas City, I was feeling like a new girl. I was ready to like hit the ground running. I was like newly awoken. But when I got back to Kansas City, after this huge road trip, something I never thought would happen happened. And I can't believe I'm gonna like stand up here and say this because stuff like this doesn't happen to girls like me. It happens to my friends and it happens to girls in romantic comedies, but it doesn't happen to Nicole Leth. But when I got back to Kansas City after that road trip, I met somebody. <laughs> I actually met somebody and he's actually nice and he's actually smart and he's actually respectful and he's actually motivated and my mom actually likes him. <laughs> and he's successful in his own art career and he makes me laugh in the ways you're supposed to laugh when people are actually funny. And he cares about me in the ways that make me wish I would have chosen to be with people who cared about me this entire time. And on our first date, we talked for hours and hours and hours, and we laughed, and we danced, and we told stories about stupid things we used to do when we were kids. And it felt exactly the way I always thought a first date with someone I really liked was going to feel like. But we spent the past two months doing a series of road trips across the country because he's moving from Los Angeles to Kansas City. <laughs> and I'm so excited because I live in Kansas City. <laughs> And I get to see a whole lot more of him now. But we've literally driven across the country like three or four times in the past two months. And it's been absolutely crazy. But it's also been the most fun I've had in my entire life. And we've spent nights sleeping in pastel colored trailer parks in the middle of the desert. And other nights sleeping in the back of his car in the parking lots of closed down convenience stores, and even other nights sleeping in less than clean Super 8 motels in cities I really can't remember the names of right now. We've slow danced in the moonlight after having too many drinks while an old Carol King song played off somewhere in the distance. And some nights we drive late into the night 
on old deserted country highways, miles and miles away from anything that we know. And we listen to songs that mean something to us. And we talk about all the things that matter, like our dreams, or our plans for the future and how we plan on achieving those things. And sometimes he asks me about the things that make me happy. And then I ask him about the things that scare him. And then sometimes we talk about how both of these things work together in the bigger picture. And I've been trying to think about some way I can end this story, some big conclusion I can make. But I can't do that because I'm still living this right now and I can't make a conclusion to something I'm still in the middle of. But what I can say is that I haven't felt this happy or this at peace or had road trips like this in over 12 years. And to be honest, it feels exactly the way I remember it feeling and it feels the way I always wished it would. So thank you. Thank <laughs> you.